Hello everyone. HCF and LCM are two of the very basic and fundamental concepts which are taught to the students right from the age of say 8 years, 9 years. But when there are questions of HCF and LCM in competitive exams, it demands high level of speed and high level of accuracy to arrive at the right result within a given time. So today I am going to discuss some of the shortcuts and basic concepts which one must know right from the basic level and practice them in order to succeed in examinations at higher level. The first concept which I am going to take up is that of numbers which are co-prime. You must have heard of co-prime numbers. Co-prime numbers are those numbers which have only one as their common factor. Suppose 5 and 7. 5 and 7 both occur in the table of only one. So we call them co-prime because they do not have any other common factor other than one. In these co-prime numbers, the highest common factor is always 1. So the first concept for today is if we see two co-prime numbers, their HCF is always 1. And simultaneously, LCM of two co-prime numbers is always equal to their product. So LCM is 5 into 7, 35. So we don't need to apply traditional methods when we see co-prime numbers in our calculation. They may be direct uh, questions involving direct uh, calculation of HCF and LCM or questions involving taking LCM when we are dealing with rational numbers. So two co-prime numbers have HCF 1 and LCM equal to product of the two numbers. Now if the numbers are not co-prime then we use the prime factorization. Now prime factorization method can be applied to any larger numbers, any numbers which are having common factors between them. I will take one example. Say we are having an example of say 20 and 35. I am taking small examples so that the concept is clear to you and you can apply that concept to solve bigger numbers, questions involving bigger numbers. Now, for prime factorization, say 20 has a factor of 2 into 2 into 5 and 35, 7 into 5. So we observe here that there is one common factor 5 in these two prime factors. So when we have common factors in the numbers, the HCF is only the common factors. So HCF is only 5 is common, so we have 5 as the HCF of these two numbers and LCM will have common and uncommon both factors. We have to write all the common factors once and all the uncommon factors also once. See. 5 is common, so we write 5 once. 2 square is not common, so we write 2 square also. And 7 is also not common, so we write 7 also. So your answer is 7 5 the 35 multiplied by 4, that is 140. So finding HCF and LCM should take you hardly 10 seconds for any kind of problem. Now, we have one result which is very important concerning the LCM and HCF of two numbers which is this LCM and HCF of two numbers when multiplied will give you product which is equal to the product of the two numbers which we have taken for calculating the LCM and HCF. This is a very very important result for competitive exams. There are four terms here, two numbers, their HCF and their LCM, four, four things involved. So let me just verify this identity for the 
problem which I have just done. So the numbers were 20 and 35 and their LCF and LCM we just found out. So let us check this. LCM was 140, HCF was 5 and the numbers were 20 and 35. So I will take the product of numbers here. 140 into 5, 14 5 the 70, so 700 and 35 to the 70 which is 700 again. So the identity is right. Now suppose we are given three terms out of these four terms and we have to find the fourth term. This is very common question in all competitive exams and even at 9th and 10th class um, NCRT books you will find such questions involving this identity. So suppose uh, we are given two numbers say we are having first number as say 8 and second number as say 12. We are given that their HCF is 4 and we are to find their LCM. Now we don't have to factorize just for finding the LCM, take the product of numbers and divide it by HCF. So answer will be 24. Similarly, if one of the number is to be found out, then you multiply the HCF and LCM and divide it by second number. So these kind of problems are very important. Now let us come to another very very important problem which is asked in competitive exams. So I am taking one example of that problem because it is very easier to understand the steps when we uh, have one example. So let us have this question. We have to find the greatest four digit number greatest four digit number which is divisible by say two, three given numbers which is divisible by say we are given three numbers say we have 12, 20 and 32. We have to find the greatest four digit number which is divisible by divisible means exactly divisible by 12, 20 and 32. Now these kind of problems now we have to understand that this problem involves the use of LCM. Now for solving this we just find the LCM of 12, 20 and 32. You can utilize this method which I discussed just now and you will come to the result uh, regarding the LCM. I will just solve it for you. So 12 is 2 square into 3, 20 is 2 square into 5, and 32 is 2 raised to power 5. So the LCM is, say we have the common factor 2, the highest power of 2 is 2 raised to power 5, then we have 3 and a 5. The common factors and the uncommon factors all I have taken. So this is 32 into 15 which comes out to be 480. So the LCM of these three numbers is 480. For solving this question, you have to find out the LCM really quickly so that you can save some time in this question. Now, for finding the greatest four digit number, what we do is we divide this number 9999 which is the greatest four digit number by the LCM. By the LCM. Now, when we have the LCM of these three numbers, we divide it and we find the remainder. The remainder. I am not dividing it actually. I am just telling you the method of solving this. So, we will find the remainder and your answer will be the greatest five digit number minus the remainder. So, for solving these kind of problems, finding a greatest 4 digit, 5 digit number which is exactly divisible by some given numbers. Take the LCM of some given numbers, divide the greatest 4 digit number by that, find the remainder and subtract the greatest number and the remainder to get the answer. 
Similarly, we, when we are given uh, smallest say five digit number, which is exactly divisible by now exactly same question, but now we have to find the smallest. Now for finding the smallest, what we do is again find the LCM first step. LCM obviously you have to find the LCM first, then second divide. Divide what? Divide the smallest four digit number or five digit number, whichever you are asked by the LCM. And your answer is obtained by divisor minus remainder. This is your answer for smallest number. Divisor minus remainder. So, friends, Obviously, there is a variety of questions in books. You have to spare time, but ultimately knowing a particular concept is very important. And when you are having a bag full of tricks, bag full of shortcuts to deal with each and every type of problem, you can solve all problems at ease. So keep learning, keep enjoying and share and subscribe the video if you like it.